Halloween is a fun night filled with costumes, candy, and scares, but there are also many potential safety concerns. Here to shed some light and to help you navigate with the spooky holiday, uh, without fear that is, is attorney Misha Moulton. Hey Misha. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. So obviously we're all excited for Halloween, the trick-or-treating aspect, yes. but at the same time there are some responsibilities that we might have. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So as a homeowner, you have a responsibility to ensure that your property is safe. Of course, there's going to be kids and teenagers, adults that are accompanying their kids. And there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of traffic that's going to be moving through uh, your property. You want to make sure that you have repaired anything that's open and obvious, anything that looks dangerous, something that could potentially hurt someone. You want to make sure that you check around your premise and that you've done your due diligence. This is really interesting because I don't think, you know, a lot of people think about those things and, yeah. you know, I'd be curious to learn just what might some of those cases be in terms of, you know, if somebody leaves something and somebody gets hurt. So what does that, what happens there? Yeah, so an example is let's say there's a repair that's needed to some stairs and somebody slips and falls. Mm. So in that case, depending on their injury, they're obviously gonna have medical bills and then they'll usually end up having to pursue a claim against your homeowner's insurance. So we wanna make sure that everybody stays safe and healthy and a lot of these situations can be avoided just by simply checking the premise and just getting get repaired and if for some reason your property isn't safe then you may not want to open it up to trick-or-treaters that makes sense and then you know of course obviously a, the favorite part for everyone when it comes to trick-or-treating is the candy yes but we do know that there are some people who might make their own treats too so are there sort of safety concerns with that as well I would highly recommend not making any of your own treats uh, definitely just buy packaged treats from the store it's the safest method uh, you don't know what kind of allergies someone might have. Uh, there's just a lot of liability with making your own treats. So a lot of schools these days don't even want you sending treats with your kids. So I wouldn't recommend passing them out to trick-or-treaters. Yeah, and there has also, you know, as we're talking about things to be aware of, things to look out for, we do know that obviously trick-or-treating, a lot of it is yeah. walking, right, throughout yes. the streets and things like that. What are some concerns there as well that people should just be made aware of when they're doing that? I mean, you're walking, you know, from house to house, but you've got to cross the street, you've got right. to walk, walk, you know, in certain areas. So tell us a little bit about that. So I would definitely accompany your young kids, um, you know, don't let them go on their own, uh, depending on their age, or let them at least travel with a group. Uh, you want to make sure that they stay in well-lit areas and try to make their costume bright and something that's visible, or maybe some kind of light um, that just allows drivers to notice them and see them. And you want to try to stay out of heavy traffic areas where maybe the speed limit is a little bit higher. Try to stay in residential areas. Generally, most people are pretty aware that there's a lot of foot traffic, so they're driving a little bit more cautiously, but there's always unfortunate situations every year, so you wanna to try to do everything you can to avoid those. And it's really helpful, you know, obviously we wanna enjoy the holiday and, and have a great time, you know, but it's important to sort of be aware of these things. Right. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about is if something were to happen, what should someone's next steps always be? So the next step should always be to contact the police so an investigation can happen at the scene, and then depending on how you're feeling, if you're feeling hurt, you want to get medical attention right away. So go to an urgent care or hospital, depending on your injuries, and get checked out. And then at that point, contact a lawyer before speaking to any insurance. All right, wonderful. Well, it's been great insight that you've given. So we're just going to make sure that we also end on a really fun note. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what are you most looking forward to with Halloween? I am looking forward to going trick-or-treating with my daughter. So she has her Wednesday costume picked out. Oh my goodness, how yeah, cute. Yeah, she's so excited. I had nothing to do with it. She <laughs> wanted to be Wednesday all on her own. Yes. So I'm looking forward to going out with her. I love that. Yeah. My husband and I were thinking we should be like the couple Gomez and Morticia from Adam's family. I totally love that. do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Misha, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Yeah, thank you so much. The law offices of Misha Moulton are on Howard Hughes Parkway. For more information, you can visit MishaMoultonLaw.com.